Okay, world. Um, this video is in response or kind of an addendum to what uh, Brian Orr from HVAC School uh, mentioned about a contactors being uh, less than six ohms resistance. Um, and that being said, a bad coil on the uh, contactor coil. Um, that's uh, not a correct statement. Everything else in the video I said uh, is very good. Um, but this particular contactor right here is uh, a 24-volt um, coil, as you can see. Three-pole. There's your Johnstone number, L36697, made by Eaton. There's your, all your numbers. Uh, it's a 60-amp contactor. Um, this particular contactor ohms out. There's a... And you'll see it also, it'll tone out here. Uh, I want to go to ohms so you don't get the tone bothering you. And like you said, um, using alligator clips is always a good way to go when you're wanna, wanting to ohm something. So you take your fingers and your body out of the equation. Okay, so we'll just put this on the coil. This is a brand new contactor. It does function. I'll show you in a minute that it does function. It's a brand new contactor. Um, out of the box. Um, and it reads 0.9 ohms, so less than an ohm. And that's a brand new, good functioning contactor. I'll show you in just a minute that it does function. I'm going to plug in a transformer. I have a 24 volt transformer right here. Um, and let's test this contactor. So, this contactor right here, like I said, is about 0 0.8, 0 0.9, or 1 ohm resistance uh, across the coil um, I just disconnected it okay so there we go okay basically one ohm uh, depending on temperature that can vary outside ambient um, that that can vary also if the contactor was just powered up or it's hot or cold or whatever that kind of thing uh, can vary your res resistance can vary but anyways let's uh let's hook up to the contactor and uh, <clears throat> let's check our power here and see what we got in the way of power so let's go to volts sine wave AC volts since it's a 24 volt transformer 115 volt AC coming in we're going to get 24 volts AC, <clears throat> somewhere uh, 24 to 29 volts is a good voltage. Um, and so let's check, and I have 26.9. So I like saying 27 volts on a transformer, that's beautiful. All, everything up to 29 volts is acceptable. Uh, 30 volts will blow up thermostats, so just be aware of that. Um, no load on this transformer is 27 volts, I'm pretty sure, 26.8. Depending on your incoming voltage, your outgoing voltage is going to vary. So, uh, <clears throat> all right, so uh, let's power this up. And, okay, so there's our, there's your contactor all pulled in. You guys heard it clinking and clanking as I was trying to, uh, connect the wires on there, but she's a beast. She's a big boy, three pole. But uh, as you can see, uh, good working contactor, a beast. Um, the actual current draw. This is kind of something I don't think Brian touched on. Um, I don't know what's going on with my little push-ons here. What's Got a little issue. So, anyways, okay. So we're pulled in. This is a 75 VA transformer right here. Uh, you could read it, hopefully. 
see 60 amps it says right here we're upside down because I can get to the wires that way <coughs> so I am feeding let's do our volts AC and uh, we have I'm checking the primary voltage coming in the way goes have 119 118 119 volts um, yesterday I had like 120 volts and my I was a little over 27 volts with my, on my secondary side so uh, that's that we have volts we have 25 volts 20 in 25 and a half volts under load right now okay uh, let's check our amps um, let's put our amp clamp around the transformer, the 24 volt side, and see what we're <clears throat> see what we're drawing. Um, let's go to amps, amps AC. Remember, this is AC. Okay, we're drawing 1.6. See if we can put this all in screen. 1.7 amps on the 24 volt side your fuse pops at 3.2 amps so if you were to run one of these contactors you could not run any more than one of these big boy contactors off of a 75 VA would be the perfectly sized transformer for each con contactor big boy like this if you were to put uh, Two contactors on even a 75 VA transformer, this being a fairly large transformer. The standard in the industry is 40 VA, 50 VA on a residential um, commercial. Um, you're uh, 1.7, you're going to be at uh, 3.5 amps. You would uh, trip that breaker for if you put so he off to you if you were to do this. You shouldn't use actually a 24 volt transformer in this application. You should use a 115 volt coil or 230 volt coil. Um, but this was just what I had around, and it depends on your application. So um, I had an extra one of these lying, lying around from a job. Um, just thought I would like to bring this information to light because. Uh, Brian had mentioned, like I said, anything less than 6 ohms on a contactor on a coil is bad. Not true. Um, this will, after you use it, and uh, it gets warm and it's been running or whatever, you can actually get probably in the 0.7 or 0.8. Um, we'll do a test on it right now on ohms after it's been working a little bit. And... Let's see what we get. Ohms. 0.9, so a little bit less. So uh, than your 0.1 that we started out with. So, anyways, I just wanted to bring that to light. Um, this is a standard uh, one pole contactor with a shunt across it. That's what they call these one poles. If you wanted to ask for it in the, in the supply house, it's called one a one pole with a shunt. Or you have a two pole would have a two pole contactor. And this is a three pole contactor. One, two, three. Three places to hook up a load. Okay. Um, so let's ohm out this brand new. This is a brand new contactor. Um, Hook this up. Let's see what we get. Ohms. Get about 14 ohms. So uh, we're on there pretty good. So 14 ohms is your standard residential. Uh, this is about a 30 amp or a 40 amp contactor. I believe this is a this is a Eaton. These are the ones that I get at Johnstone. Good contactor. One pole. One pole with a shunt. 24 volt coil 40 amps um, there's your number on it or Johnstone number is going to be I don't 
There it is. Uh, L45981. It's going to be your Johnstone number. Um, for this big 75 VA, I don't know if I mentioned it. Um, there you go. Uh, Johnstone number L37310. Um, there's your Packard number on it. 75 VA with a circuit breaker. L37310. It's going to be 120, 208, 240, or 480 volt. 75 VA transformer. Okay. So, we've got that. Um, you can check these if you don't want to use, uh, if you don't have alligator clips. Alligator clips are a really good thing to have. I suit they are wonderful to have uh, but you can you could kind of do it in the groove you could do it in the groove here um, anywhere in there and you a lot easier without alligator clips though you get a lot better reading it takes your body out of the equation if you were touching something but uh, 14 ohms so you're probably gonna get um so you go that's just what it, I wanted to bring to light, that uh, one ohm on a coil does not make it bad. Um, basically, what you have to do is you have to just ohm a new one and figure out, you know, what you, what you have and what you need. Or uh, write, down, or write down in your phone under the notes, your notepad section, under the notes... Uh, you can ohm, you could start ohming a bunch of new contactors and just have that as a reference issue. Um, like this one, I'm going to write this in my book as 14 ohms. So 10 to 20% in either direction uh, would probably be okay. That's what I would use for a uh, reference point. Uh, over 20% in either, in either direction. I would replace the contactor um, because something would be going that would be a good maintenance type thing uh, to know what a new contactor should ohm at and then ohm a good used one it may still be good but if it exceeds 20 percent of its original rating something start it's starting to fail so you want it would want to replace that as a standard operating procedure for preventative maintenance. Okay, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to say with this video. Uh, click like on the video if you could and subscribe. All right, uh, take care. Bye.